Shelby cars have always been a part of the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, and this year they displayed and unveiled some awesome examples like this freshly restored 1969 GT500. All right, everybody, put your hands together. Very cool car. Thank you so much for bringing it out here for the 2016 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. However, the McCacken Show is not just about the cars, and you will often find the people behind the cars in attendance at the show. We were fortunate enough to chat with Chuck Cantwell and learn more about his key role in developing the Shelby Mustangs. People think that, you know, Shelby's the big name on these cars, but there are a lot of other names that are critically important in the development of these cars. Mr. Chuck Cantwell is with us. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with all of this. Okay, I was a uh, project engineer uh, on the GT350s and the 500s, and also on the Trans Am cars that came at the same time, actually, and, and the race, the car model race cars, which we have here in the in the show. And uh, my responsibility was was to uh, make sure everything came together. We all the parts were identified that we needed and uh, purchased with the to the purchasing people. And we had sources, and we had enough of the parts to build the cars as, uh, as the production demand dictated. And I worked with the production people in order to uh, you know, help them decide what the best way was to, to uh, produce the cars, to add pieces and take off pieces that we had to do. So when it comes to uh, um, project engineering, you were dealing with OE Ford level stuff, you're dealing with aftermarket suppliers, you're dealing with, uh, you know, race part people, so you're pulling from all different directions. We're pulling from, you know, everywhere, and we, and we had, besides those uh, sources, we also had to deal with people, that just manufacturers, and we had parts that we weren't necessarily manufacturing, weren't necessarily aftermarket, but were manufactured specifically for the car, and so we had to supply sufficient information for them. Uh, it was, uh, we took a lot of shortcuts in, in, in some of the stuff from what you would normally do. We didn't have as many drawings as you might uh, might have, but we had enough drawings to do the, to get the center out and get the parts made. And, uh, you know, we worked with the suppliers very closely so that if we had problems, we could nip them in the bud. And, uh, so the 65 cars, the regular GT350 cars, in my opinion, were far more of a uh, specialty car than the 66. It seems like the 66 cars became more production line friendly uh, as far as the design and some of the choices made. Well, they did, and, and we made some changes halfway through the year that, that helped that out a little bit, you know, cut costs on the assembly line and uh, everything. But the, the 65 cars were... Um, they were really a performance car. 66s were still a performance car, but we wanted to add some features that, that differentiated the cars from the Ford, the standard Ford Mustang. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we did that with the quarter windows and so forth. Well, and what that leaves us today is every iteration of the car has its own unique story and its yes. own personality. And part of the mystique of why these cars are so popular Sure, they're awesome performers. Sure, they look great. Sure, they're collectible. But these kinds of stories are so fascinating yeah. uh, to hear how this stuff actually happened because I don't think things happen this way today. You know, it's a different well, world. Yeah, pr probably not. We we're, <laughs> were a little pr primitive maybe in, in some of the things we were doing, but we had a lot to do in a very short period of time. I mean, in, in the 65 model, we started building the first couple of cars in 64, but in the 65, calendar year, we produced essentially 500 GT350s, designed the 66 GT350, started building those cars, and before the end of the year, we were in the Trans Am cars, building them. Yeah, and those, being those successful at all. And then, we, yeah, we won all the championships with those cars. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, where can somebody find out more of these stories? I, I'm under the impression there's a new book. Well, yes, I'm going to say, Greg Colossi, who's a notable Shelby historian, and myself are, are writing a book on, essentially on my, my time
time there at Shelby and, and the things we were involved in and uh, the history of how the cars developed and changed and, and over the period of time that we were covering was about four years. So it's, it should be an interesting book, I think. It has a lot of stories and a lot of detail about how things were done. It, it should be interesting, we hope. Well, we look forward to, uh, to seeing it when it comes out. Well, good. Chuck, thank you so much for taking the time, you're, and we appreciate all your hard work over the years, and, uh, and all of us who appreciate these cars uh, really love this show and seeing this kind of stuff and, and hearing yeah. this stuff from guys like you. Thank you. Yeah, you're quite welcome. <laughs>